So Snuggle Base and Hokomoko versus Yogstat Skazi for third place. I'm thinking Yogstat and Skazi are probably gonna take second. Sorry, not for third place, for second place. Well, for a chance to win. Whoever loses gets third place. That makes this the best this is the best of three, right? Yes, this loser's finals is best of three. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I I could see. Hmm. I, I could see Snuggle Base and Hokomoko taking one game off of Yog and Skazi, but two and three, that that sounds good a bit rougher. But it's it, it's not like I, w I wouldn't entirely yeah, I wouldn't entirely count them out. I'd say they. Oh no, they're good. They're strong. It's just Yog and Skazi. I mean, they gave Drone and Golda a run for their money, so that's saying something. Yeah. Like they mm. they pushed hard. They might have been drained as a result, though. That's the one thing. Yeah, I, I guess the yeah. Well, I, I guess the other half of the point is that you know, on a map which Skarsi and Yogzothos choose, can, will, will they lose on that one? That, mm -hmm. That's that, that's the toughest part. Yeah, because they well, that or go to game three and have some, do the same as last time, where game one goes to the other team, that's true. and then Yog and Skarsi pick a map and win, and then game three. Uh, because more Yogg and Skazi have to win on a map that they didn't pick. That's the bigger thing, it seems. Because it looks like Geyser Plains game against you guys. It was really close and then it just got turned around. But you guys nearly had them. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm... <laughs> yeah, I need to practice my late game play a bit. Ah. Uh, I play, you know, I most play a lot of 1v1. So most games end in the first 10 minutes. That's a fair point, yeah. You know, say you know, I, I might occasionally see you know, games go to Grizzlies and Dantes and stuff, but it's more just as a you know, some a means to end the game as opposed to something which actually sees significant amounts of fighting. Well, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, That's really what you have. More, more practice. Yeah. Or occasionally you know, a silencer if you can. Time. <laughs> I, remember, yeah. I did that once. Oh, actually, that was a, I did it at 10 minutes in because I knew my opponent wouldn't expect it. <laughs> it worked, too. Although, by that point, I had them contained. Okay. It was more that my other... Otherwise, my siege breaking is terrible, but I happen to have a silencer up right. that I've been building up, so I just won that way. <laughs> Bit of a cheesy game. Yeah, yeah win's a win. Yeah. Is this game about to get started, I think? It um, should. Pokemon and Snuggle Base are ready. Yeah. Skazi and Yogg might want to <laughs> get a drink or something first. I already did. Mm. <laughs> okay, so it looks like people are still having camera issues, which bugs me. Uh, I feel like there's an idiot. Okay, that's, I shouldn't talk about that right now. This room is 4.2. It is 4.2, and that's a problem. It really should be 4.3. That way the camera problems should be fixed. Yeah, but something else might break. So what? Which is the worry? Oh, well, I don't know. Not much changed. Alright, well, Yogstoth apparently got a crash? What the hell? I don't know what happens. Okay, well, once it gets going, I guess. Whenever that happens. What kind of factories do you expect to see on this map? Titan Jewel. Titan Jewel? Probably be vehicles. Light right? vehicles. Light vehicles and heavy tanks. Maybe a gunship plant. I don't know. I doubt it. I don't know about tanks. But... Bots should be reasonable. Yeah, I think... I think I've seen... Yeah, I think... Mostly light vehicles. May, my feelings, maybe tanks. Maybe someone goes hover, but probably not. Maybe cloaky bots. Mm -hmm. I'd, be surprised to, I'd, I'd be surprised to see anything else. Spiders, spiders a bit slow. I don't... Snap. Why wouldn't we go spiders and Titan Duel? There's nowhere to get the hill yeah. advantage. That makes no sense to me. 
I don't know, for like crabs, I suppose, but no, I, I don't need hide your constructors yeah. down the holes. Yeah, it's true. Is that it? Okay. I, I was wondering for a moment, Hokumoko looked like he was planting a... Oh, no, Anthem. that's what he... Yeah, yeah Anthem I, plant. I wouldn't have called that. No, they've been well, really like Well, it's okay, ducks are reasonable. That's true. Wait, what? Oh, okay. double Anthem. <laughs> I don't think that's correct. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, yeah, maybe he might be just trolling us. Um, All the amphibs. Just so. Every building they build in this game is an amphib factory. Amphibious on land. Um, it was well, more a month ago, I think, but or a month or two. But Amphibious is seeing some play on purely land maps. It is. It's, I think, better on purely land maps, honestly. Is it? I think it so. It, well, <laughs> it more than, some... you can't. Well, what, what do you have underwater? You have boys that surface. The only thing you have purely underwater are scallops and ducks. Everything else has to surface to fire, and only boys and archers actually surface on their own. Grizzly surfaces. Grizzly surfaces? Yeah. Okay. At any rate, though, you can't fight subs with amphib without using ducks and scallops. But subs are actually not all that good. Oh, fair point. It's just kind of, I don't know, I don't see a lot of people going for it. Most people will just go for ducks and scallops because that's the only thing that fires from underwater. Everything else has to surface, and that feels intimidating. I can't remember the last time I saw yeah. a player actually go for mass boys. I mean, there was a bit of boys in that Inculta game on the sem I think semifinals match. It was... Oh, not semifinals. It was the Anarchy Affiliates Golden Drone match, I think. Which one was I watching? It was Snuggleweight. Yeah, no, Snuggleweight and, and, and Hokomoko. Snuggleweight and Hokomoko. That's what it was. They were on in Cult of Wet, and they, yeah, I think there was a few boys at the end as a desperation move. Right. That was it. We've got plant in the top. Yep. Okay, that's a bit more typical. No, it still amazes me that. We haven't figured out whether you should build planes in a 2v2. <laughs> I know, Surely, right? Surely that would have been figured out. Is it, it must be just really hard and really map-dependent. I think it is. I mean, corner starts encourage it, high areas encourage it, or plateaus rather encourage it. But flatter things, like Red Comet-style maps or Comet Catcher-style maps, there are enough ways to flank, even though it is a narrow map. I don't see it work. I don't see it happening. I think people are too afraid. I can see it working, I just don't see it happening. Mm. Just part of it is that actual 2v, specifically 2v2, get, gets played you know, in tournaments, occasionally just just as random games, but often not as you know, a, a, like a pair of players. You know, you get matched with just, and you just you can get matched with just anyone. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, There's no team thing. There's no make a team and go with that team. That's your team. You form a party or something. Yeah, might be some, might be something to introduce to the game at some stage, but um. Yeah, hopefully we'll get rid of the large team problems. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I didn't actually play in it, but I think um the latest iteration of Planet Wars was mostly two v two. Oh yeah, the last one was. It was entirely two v two. Ah yes. Yes. Game. Yeah. yeah. So the game's underway. We have um. Yogzotov. Playing air, Skazi light vehicles, Snuggle base light vehicles as well, and finally Hokumoko playing the wild card here, Amphibious. Which is going heavy ducks, as expected. Well, well it's impromptu, the radar. impromptu anti air, yeah, I know what you mean. Impromptu anti air, though, so at least there's that. Hmm. And they're not against spiders. Uh, ducks may well be slower than ravens. They are, I think. And they don't have the burst to actually kill one if it goes for them. Oh, yeah, you would need well, a lot it, of them. It, dep it, it depends how many ducks you Yeah, have. you would oh, need yes, about, I think, four or five of them. How much else the raven But they have? are really good against scorches, ducks. Yeah, you'd need five is ducks it's... to kill a raven. Is it strange what ducks are good against? And what they're not? Yeah, especially after the change a few months ago when they went from 400 health, 400 damage to 350 health and 230 damage. They stopped one-shotting each other. That helps. You could actually yeah, be ducked in a group, finally. 
And then take an example, which I'm more familiar with. That Amp versus Cloak is very strange because Ducks are really good against Glaive, but they kind of lose to Rocco, which yeah. is not, you know, based, based on what the how other matchups work, it's not in terms of the relationship between Raider and Skirmisher, it's not what you'd expect. But they're well, definitely um, securing the Raider game in this game here. They are. Yeah, I, yeah. Hokemoku and Snogabase are really taking this quickly. They're taking a lot of territory, not claiming too much of it, but just putting stuff in the way, just soft containing. One thing I've, I was about to say, oh, well, but Ducks, they are skirmishers. I mean, they're low, they're short range skirmishers, basically. Short range rapid fire skirmishers. That's, I and mean, they fire missiles. I never really thought about it like that, but I suppose the, 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 the way that you know, they kind of fire and forget. Well, they mm -hmm. have low, um, low damage for a raider, but high alpha. That's their thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's I mean, much so more like a skirmisher. Except yes. they're a bit faster and they have a much higher fire rate. Than most skirmishers. And they don't overkill. Yes. But yeah, they're basically scalpels with legs on short range. See, that command is now scared away. Ravens are still good at something. Yeah, so it, yeah, that, that is part of the reason, I think, um, well, yeah, part, part of the reason why uh, Snuckle Base and Hokomoko look, look like they have such control of this game at this stage is because they're playing, you know, there's two land against one air and one land factory. That helps yeah, a they, lot. They simply, have, they, they simply have more units, but I'm not sure that they're actually taking the map control, like, I'm not sure they're actually taking the metal income to justify it. Well, they, they're they kind of slowly doing it. They aren't really pushing forward with their workers. They're, which is surprising, actually. I, I would kind of expect that they would have gone a bit further forward, set up a few defenses, and then expanded more confidently behind that. But instead, they're expanding at the uh, normal rate, just keeping units up front in order to have rapid response, or at least know when stuff's coming sooner. Not actually so much taking territory. The, these ducks in the north look like they might get some, might get some work done, though. Well, well, the Scorchers are coming back to deal with it. Yeah. Although that raven, ooh, that raven almost got knocked down. One more set of missiles would have done it, but not enough. Yeah, but missiles can't catch ravens. The ravens ran into them. Ah. That raven, that raven's 195 metal in the north of the map. Well, not north. The anymore. raven actually baited out the duck shots. Yeah. That was, well, the, between the raven and the metal, metal extractor, yeah, those scorchers managed to get in in the reload time. Which is the weird thing about ducks? They have a reload time. Maybe short, but it's still there. Okamoko is finally taking the the metal points down in the um, southwest of the map, mm -hmm. bottom left. And they are I've, actually. I've been waiting. For them. I've been waiting for them to take that for a while. Well, their hidden income of the Scuzzy does have reclaim. Not much, but some. It's about 120 metal yeah, it's worth. Probably, probably about to run out. It is. Um, but it's still something, and Yogstoth, oh, they're picking up something too, I think? Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, they both have a decent amount of reclaim. Though Yogstoth, their commander getting threatened. Does Snogglebase know that it's actually there? And the answer is yes. Snogglebase knows something is there. They don't know exactly what's there. But they know that You saw the commander up there before. They must know it's the commander. I would expect they would. They haven't gone for it though, which is a bit surprising. They what? could get away with it. However, this attack over the south- could jump into is the river and be fine. Oh, that's true, yeah. Or onto the cliff. Uh, ow, and that anyway, Phoenix gets escape. away. But yeah, the, well, they could go on the cliff, yes. Except if the Scorchers get around the right way. The Just, Phoenix did get away, but didn't it, did it... Maybe it killed one duck? I'm maybe? Sure. I don't know. It damaged a bunch, though. Yeah, it did, but they're going to heal up. There's a there's a Mason right there, anyway. You could easily repair them. And more Ravens going down. That air start is really not working out. Actually, no, the Raven's not going down, but they're going to repair for a while. They'll be kept One busy. Died. I, I think it is... Uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate for their air start that um that they're playing against this unconventional amp start or amphibious fact on this map because the Ducks... I mean, the Ducks aren't, like, dedicated to the air or anything, but with enough... And you, it does, it, with enough Ducks, um, they can get rid of Bombers yeah. easily. Snuggle Base and Hokomoko aren't having to build anti-air to defend their army. Yeah, that's you know, the they, they, can just, they can just get by with, you know, some defenders, you know, just littered around and the just map. They're, take they're out, need... like there, take out a phoenix that's going in for the kill. Yeah. 
Looks and the like one that any raider would do that for. Commander at least might be in trouble up top. Oh, the, the commander's dead. In for it. This com is it's got dead. Jump still, but nope, uh, it, it missed the jump. Back. This doesn't matter though. Actually, it does. It survives oddly enough, even though it missed the jump, they, it gets uh, out of the way enough. They graciously permit it to live, I think. Barely, but the north expansion is going down. There's no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Then, yeah, then I can... they have both sides. Their economy's thoroughly ahead. Oh Looks yeah. Looks like all the are um, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're now in a lot of bother. Um, yeah. That being said, Skazi is building um, Wolverines. Wolverines are pretty good. That should help. I, I, I don't know. Who, and a shield bot factor. Shield bot factor from Yogstoss. So they're probably. I, I don't know if they're gonna go for a ball or if they're gonna go for rogues. Try to out. Nice rocket, roaches. That weird roaches. Yeah, roaches would actually be a good thing. And no air switch from Hokomoko or Snuggle Base. They are content with their current factory choice, which they are supplementing with the nano towers. The caretaker. Well, the caretakers are workers. So at least they are building those up when they have the resources. Exactly as they need to do. And really, that shield bot factory, I don't know if it's going to have time to build up. I'm really thinking it won't. So many Lotus nanoframes, too. Yeah, it's like, I don't know uh, how it's going to work. Thugs coming out of okay, it. so they're going for a thug ball. Possibly Thug Felon. Well, they're trying I, to beat I, defenses, beat these slashes. I, 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 guess the, I guess they're trying to beat the slashes, but uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be too little, too late. The, the um, Hokimoko in particular just has, you know, like, well, I suppose both of them. This army's just a bit too big at this stage. And yeah. Might, you know, they, perhaps, they, perhaps they don't win in a real hurry, but they, you know, they have both corners. They're making almost double the medal now. Just about, except for Reclaim. That's the only thing that's keeping Skuzzy and Yogstoth in the game right now. That'll run out. Yeah. Yogstoth's commander is running into the slashes again. What has this commander got? Concussion shot. I don't know that I've seen that before. I've He's blown up a bunch of slashes with it. Twice, but yeah, it's not great. Oh, and the slashers oh, have it. Got stuck. Okay. Ouch. Bad yeah, jump point, and Yogstoth's that commander goes down. I think maybe if he kind of tried to fiddle the commander it might have worked but I don't it know. looked like it, it looked like it should have been up the top but that was weird in, in any case it's now dead it is but it's had, dead for a frustrating reason yeah he invested a lot of metal in that so it, ah, that is a shame it, so you know in addition to their re, in addition to their sheer economy disadvantage and the air stars as that yeah yeah, stuff hasn't been that useful. Crap, so they got a commander early. Yeah, they or almost use. got Hokomokos. I just they sent two instead of three. I guess they were expecting a recon gone. Or use Thunderbirds. Yeah, that would actually that... probably pull them back a bit. I'm not thinking about early that. when they had a lot of. Um, oh, and it's, sorry, it, commentating. Thunderbirds. Sorry, or Felix is asking who's commentating. I'm Shredder CC3. Guys, you might want to introduce yourselves. Oh, oh, right. Google Frog. And I'm Aquanim. Okay. Sorry about that. I introduced you guys earlier, but I didn't let you guys match to the voice. Right. <laughs> well, confusion's now resolved until someone else wanders in and wonders. Well, confusion's going to be resolved two minutes from now. <laughs> right. Because of the delay, because of the tournament. Anyway, that's game one. So congratulations to Snuggle Base and Hokomoko. So Yogstoth and Skazi are now going to pick a map to win on. Or try to win on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, th I, think, I think a lot of that can... I don't think Air starts bad on Comet Catcher. Nor do I think they... Pl Sorry, not Comet Catcher. Titan Jill. I don't, think it I don't think it's bad. I don't think they played it exceptionally badly. I think they got unfortunate with the, with the factories they happened to be matched up against. Especially the amphibious factor. I can't think of many. I can't think of many other factories whose radar beats bombers nearly so well as duck. Well, hovercraft can be a little bit scary, so there's that. But you otherwise, need, you yeah, need the know. critical mass. That's true. I think, I think the critical the critical mass of daggers you need is a lot bigger. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's nine. Start, yeah, you need nine daggers. Whereas you only need five ducks. And ducks are cheaper. Hmm. That's a good point.
That is a very good point. All right, so we are going on to game two on... Wait. Seriously? I think they picked... Yeah, it looks like they picked Comet Catcher. Did they pick Comet? They did. No, wait. No, wait, what? Hang on, no. Golda... But he wanted Comet Catcher. He just couldn't. He wasn't bossed. Oh. Okay. Wow, I... I guess they're really confident in their ability to out-expand. At least when they don't have corners to worry about. Hmm. Mm. I feel like it's it's not a bad choice for them. Well, but against yeah, <laughs> I against agree. against Gotta and Drone, they need you know they needed something like Icy Run, something where they could um where they could cheese, but um for lack of a better term, but against against Snuggle Base and Okamoko, I think that. They have at least reasonable cause to have some confidence in their um, macro skills. And they learned about Rapier from the last game they played here. Mm hmm I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not convinced about that. I, I think I don't think it was Rapier that beat them. It was just sheer econ. Yeah, if they, probably. If, if Drone and Goddard switched to tanks and built a ball of Reapers instead, the game might have been over faster. At least not, not, not much slower at any rate. It was just it was just what they chose to win with rather than rapiers inherently being imbalanced on this map. I yeah. mean rapiers that being that being said, Anything rapiers is pretty good. So we have again Anthem. Hokomoko loves their Anthem factory. Snuggle Base going for the light vehicles while Skazi and Yakstuff going for their light vehicle oh, heavy tank and light vehicle. Same as last time. Same spread as last time too. But this time closer uh, not the together. Same spread. Yeah, sorry, Yogg they're close together. They left last time. But Yogg is still light vehicle, Skazi is still heavy tanks, but yeah, Skazi and Yogg, they're taking the center this time. Well, Snuggle Base and Okamoko Which... focusing on the corner, want the defensibility, don't want to have the quick expansion. Interesting. You'll note that this is where God Ace and Drone started, so it's obviously the best place to start. <laughs> Wait, did, didn't. No, I no, thought, Drone started on the other didn't, side. Didn't, drone... they stop, didn't they start over there? Yeah, exactly. Snuggle Base and Hokomoko are actually Skazi and Yogstoth are starting the same way that Drone and Golda did. Snuggle Base yes. and Hokomoko are starting much closer to the way that Yogstoth and Skazi did, except Skazi yes, started the next spot over. Yeah, the other one. Skazi started in the next area over the one you marked. I don't know how I feel about it. Sorry, God. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say that they've sc they've scattered out. Yogstoth knows there's Life Eagles. Knows there's Amphib as well. Possibly confused again, but at least this time they aren't focusing on air early on. That's not going to screw them over. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Amphibious on Comet Catcher. But we'll see how it goes. Some of us are just the factory he's most comfortable with. Well, I think we'll go poorly. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah just, it's probably on this big of a map. Titan Duel is smaller than it looks, but this one, no. This is what, 12 by 16, I think? This is a remarkably Ooh, large map. Welders don't even care about ducks. Hmm, sorry? Welders don't even care. Oh yeah, the welders are talking ducks. about. Kodachis don't care either. Just run away. I have more than enough health to survive them. Snuggle Base not even repairing that metal extractor is letting it die to build a new one. Sheesh. Okay. So Comet catches 12 by 16. Yep. Titan Jewel's 10 by 10 and it it's a diagonal diagonal, which perhaps makes the distances a little bigger, but there's the mountains on the side as well, so the map as a whole is a great deal smaller. That's a fair point, but still Titan Duel is small and smaller and more yeah, defensible. Like you, can press, you can press outwards more easily, especially once you get the center. This one, the line, is it never changes size. Like your line doesn't get mm. bigger as you get to the center and then smaller as you cross the center. It's always the same size. Mm. So that is a bit of a problem. And it looks like Skazi and Yogsadoth are assing around, but not actually doing a whole There's lot a of There's a boy damage. out as well. There is indeed a boy, as there should be. Because against Kodachis especially, that boy is going to be very handy. Slow the thing down and let it die. Traps, but it's a non raider on Comet Catcher. Quite, <laughs> yeah. a, quite a weird move. So is Amphib. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, the, one, that's the biggest problem with Amphib on this map is, is the constructor. I think the constructor's not cheap. It doesn't have a, you know, it's not cheap. It doesn't have a weapon. I, I, don't, I don't see what, 
Kodge doesn't really have a redeeming feature for this map. No, it has build power, so I suppose you can spread them out more. But otherwise, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's just time will be spent going between mixes. Yeah, and it's slower, so that's a good point. Although it is only... It's only slightly more expensive than a five build power con um, constructor due to its speed. Hmm, suppose. So, yeah, there is that. It's going to be a lot better for assist building, that's for sure. I mean... I don't think Hokomoku is going to even need a single caretaker. They're just going to be able to use conches and not have to build too many of them. Regardless, Skazi and Yogstoth still putting some pressure on, but not as much as I think they'd like to. Snuggle Base and Hokomoku are expanding decently quickly. Not super quickly. Snuggle Base moving forward in the center. Skazi and Yogstoth, they're really slow. Skazi's commander is actually idle in the northwest. Yogstoth. The mechs cats. If you look, Building the mechs up. counts are basically even. Yeah. Oh, right. Next spot. Yeah, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen for blue team. And five, six, seven. Yep, about even. Although, it looks like Snuggle, Snuggle Base and Hokomoko are starting to fall behind when it comes to expansion speed. Scuzz, Scuzz and Snuggle, now Snuggle Base is um, loading. up in the top left. Um, is it He's got five scorches coming in. That that That's calm a doesn't have any. That calm doesn't have any friends. That calm is dead. dead. Well, actually, oh, maybe the, not. No, no the scorches were low. out of position when they yeah. came in. Not fast enough. Not organized enough. I don't think the new guys' commander was there. Yeah, probably not. I mean, the other problem was the scorches were. Like, two of the scorches walked in on almost no health, so it looked like five. But two of them, really at least two of them. Although three yeah. is enough if they attack all at once. Well, in that particular boy, case, died. it wasn't. Ouch. Yeah, this is where the Amphib factory is starting to not seem that great. Is it, you know, it took, what, one minute, two minutes for that buoy to get to the, get to a position where it was doing anything? Maybe that, yeah. at, at least. Almost thinking that uh, Hokomoko should just double down and go for Grizzly. Oh, mm, Hokomoko is building caretakers. Hmm? Not at this point. Yeah, He's literally. Got That's true. Mm. But still, at least kind it, of so go on. they have Striders, the Strider Hub. Anyway, go on. Oh, um, just a stylistic thing. Skies has put a lot, the, what I'd call a lot of Kadachis. Um, he, he's mm. now switching over to Panther, but um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's um, I, I don't think yeah, I don't think it's a mistake, but. I, you, you can make an argument for having built, you know, say two or three less Panthers and switching to, sorry, two or three less Kadachis and switching to Panther early, or maybe to Banisher. Yeah. Because a single Banisher, uh, a single Banisher kind of requires a, requires your opponent to build a response which they probably don't already have. Okay, yeah, the Banisher it, it would, I agree uh, with. The Banisher I definitely agree with. The Pan the Panthers, maybe. I think it depends on what your opponent's throwing at you. If they're counter the Kadachis, if they have stuff to deal with the Kadachis. But at this point, they kind of don't. Yeah. Scorcher... Scorcher against Kadachi depends a lot on Micro. I think Pan Panther used to stomp all over Kadachi... Sorry, Panther used to stomp all over Scorcher, but since it got nerfed, I don't know that it does anymore. Well, it was no, it nerfed specifically... It was specifically nerfed to, so that Scorchers would win, if I recall correctly. Like, I'm not sure if they the win, team. but they don't get completely stomped. Yeah, because I recall that in the changelog was sort of the focus was on that particular matchup or the particular unit right. that fight. Makes I think it also well, the, the panther panther also I believe used to one hit glaives and no longer does. It still stuns yeah, them, but, but it, it, doesn't, was, it doesn't just give them. Yeah, it was a monoculture. That was the problem. I remember that. Hmm. I remember actually, I think partially causing that in a game against Sakdoth, where I ended right. up going. Panthers against Sakdos Kodachis, and then I noticed everyone else was doing it too. I don't know if it was me starting it, but it was definitely something that happened around that time a few months ago. And they got nerfed. They probably still beat so Kodachis. The North, yeah. team, the North team seemed to be yeah, the North far team's ahead now. Taking it. They have most of the map. They have, what, 20 medal each? So 40 medal total advantage? Yeah, about two, uh, you know, two thirds again. Of Snucklebass and Hokomoko's income. Yeah. 
So at this point, good shape. They could build a factory for free. They could build a Strider Hub for free and have, thir have like thirty some odd income into a Strider, if they wanted to. Just finish this off. Or they could just keep pumping a bunch of Panthers and do that too. That works too. They could do whatever they want. They can just build stuff, build loads of stuff. Scott, Scott has brought out a Banisher now. I feel like, you know, the, the Banisher is still probably going to be good, but earlier, but earlier on it. Um, it could have built, been built earlier, and mm -hmm. it would have, it would, might have perhaps been a, a game changer then. But but that's because he didn't feel the game needed to be changed. He was doing quite fine as it was. They've been doing fine all game. North team has not really had any significant raiding happen to them. They haven't had any significant disadvantages the entire time. The the only thing they've had to deal with is the amphib plant, and that's basically been dealt with by the sheer size of the map. Hmm. So I don't really know what they would There's have. There's eleven buoys in the bottom right corner, but yeah, Hokumoku does have a significant number of buoys. That's true. By the so time on they defense, get anywhere, there'll be a response. Mm. Yeah. So on defense, they're fine, but yeah, on offense, what are they gonna do? Drop? I don't how see do, any gunship. How do buoys do? How do buoys do against um, levelers? I actually don't know. I, Probably I was, like, very well. I would expect yeah, I think so. so. Four fifty range to. Oops. Let's see, the range of levelers is. 290, so they have a range advantage, and they'd slow down the levelers, so they reduce whatever speed advantage the levelers would normally have. The, the levelers don't. The levelers yeah, are slow. They do awesome. The boosts. Yeah. Wait, they're slowing yeah, the boys to my, yeah, Just about. I, my no, my understanding of the amphibious versus light vehicle matchup is kind of limited. <laughs> it doesn't come out much. No, because uh, amphib is only used in bot maps, pretty much. This is this is a rarity. This is. This is useful data. This is something that we need to see more of as esoteric matchup combinations. Because well, who could be knows what Something like Red Comet or Titan Jewel. Yeah, okay. As we saw. That worked nicely there. Think, Although, that was air start helped. I think once I have seen Tank versus Jump. <laughs> that was a funny game. That, what, what map was that on? Um, Into Battle, I think. I can see that. Yeah, the cliffs would help yeah, out. That, people those. like to start those things there. The, the, the buoys are actually... Like, the buoys are doing quite well. The problem is they're just too slow. Yeah, so the slashers can take them out. They just don't the have the range. Slashers are the real problem. But also they they can't go anywhere useful because they're so slow. Yeah. I suspect buoy might actually beat slasher for cost. I mean, like One slasher costs only about, costs about half as much as a buoy. I'm pretty sure a buoy would beat two slashers head to head. But the between the economy range. and fat, yeah. it's, its range is pretty comparable. Yeah, but, it, but well, be, yeah, there's so many slashes. That's the problem. Yeah, the pr the problem is the you know the econ advantage and the speed advantage of the slashes mean that the, the slashes are never going to take a fight where they lose. So with that, I think the Yakuza and Skazi are basically poised to win one last ditch attempt from Snuggle Base and Hokomoko though. Coming with these Ravagers, which will break apart the Slasher line, and the Maces in the back. Those Masons need to run away, but I don't know if they're going to be attacked. They have defenses right there, so Snuggleways and Nokomoko aren't going to go for it. Wisely there not is, going for it. This, this area around here does have um, 4,500 Medal of Reclaim. I, don't, I, don't, that's, I mean, it's not going to be enough to turn the game, I don't think. But um, They don't have the energy to use it either. No. No, and they don't have any Masons nearby either. I mean, yeah, I see what you mean. There is definitely a lot of Reclaim. They've I'm, got some conches coming in, but I don't know. they're too they're vulnerable. Right. The best they can do is prevent Skazi and Yogg'Sath from using their much greater energy income to take advantage of the reclaim. Yeah, with the ten masons. Yeah. Something you suggested. To, something you suggested to me how earlier, or not, not, not in the cast, but um, switch, switch to jump and just build some puppies to take reclaim like that. You're never really going to get. But there's the game. Yeah. That's game. Also, yep. switching to jump, I don't think there's enough time to switch to jump. Okay, so well, that is a game, but it's a Probably. general thing. Yeah, this is game two, though. So that's. We're on to game three. None yet. Oh, whoops. On the bracket. Not done yet. So, what kind of map will they choose? Oh, good question. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure what kind of map they'll choose. I think they'll probably go for something that's easily protected again. Probably. Something like Ravaged. Who's gonna guess? Maybe Hokumoko has been Hokumoko has been playing Amphibious oh, all series. See, yeah, they, they might go for Inculta. They might do Inculta wet again. 
They did that against Gold and Drone. It didn't work, but it almost did. <laughs> so guys, wants them to pick Icy Run. Of course, <laughs> I don't they see want that. them to pick Icy Run. That's what they'd pick. <laughs> gotta, they want to win. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Yeah, so Skazi, of course you want that. Of course you want that. We know you want that. No. No. Bad. Sit down and think about what you did. The, the, when, when you think about C-Map in Zero K at the moment, you know, the, the, the only one that really comes to mind is a Cold Corvette. Yeah, which yep, there, there it, is. it is. Yeah, that was right. But yeah, it's the only one that comes to mind because it's the only one that's halfway decent. The only other one uh, I can think of offhand is Flooded Valley, and no one really plays that because you don't get a whole lot of room to build up. Yeah, Flooded Valley is quite weird. And then other than yeah, that, you have Star Blue Tour. Comet, which is... Actually, kind of like it, Cold Corvette. Corvette. Is that even featured? It looks really strange, the map, the texture of the map. Blue Comet? I don't know. I'm not sure if it's featured. I kind of doubt it. I think, it, I think it's not featured. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, so anyway, you have that, and otherwise, I can only think of some mixed maps. Let me see. Uh, C maps. Um, oh, no, there are, there are a couple of others that get played. I'm going to turn, back feature, to turn featured back on. Um, well, there's a kind of... Uh, okay, there's Cull. Cull gets oh, played. Oh, right, yeah. That's... I don't, I don't, I've seen that once. I don't I've know, played but, that once. I don't know. I don't know, like... I'm not sure I've met anyone who likes Cull. Well, Cull is a hovercraft map. Cull isn't a ship map, it's a yeah. hovercraft map. Oh, Sands of War, that's another one that gets played for some bizarre reason. Yeah, I've seen, like, there are some C maps that get played in free for all. Oh, yeah, I can see but that. Yeah, because that's because it's. It works oh. okay, though. It makes barriers. Coastal's tiny, it gets played occasionally. Oh, yeah. That's true. I've seen it from time to time. So, Coastal, Sands uh, of War, Flooded Valley occasionally, and with the massively major frequency advantage, Inculta Wet. Because Inculta yeah. Wet is easily the cleanest of those maps. I don't, I, don't even, I, I don't even know that I ever knew the name of this map, but Bellicose Islands? I've, I've played on that one once or twice. I think it was Team. Sail Away for team games. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. I would not play what you could maybe play two v two on sail away. I wouldn't play one v one. Sail away. I don't see it as not featured. Should be. I'd have thought it'd be featured. I don't see. Might it. not be. It might not be C only. Oh, okay. I'd be mixed. Well, that's a different matter entirely, then, isn't it? It is. It's a C map, though. Ah, uh, okay. I, I... It's... No, so the, <laughs> the game going now. Yeah, I get that. Okay, I've never seen Sail Away. Anyway, moving on to the game itself. Instead of talking shop about yeah. stuff that no one probably cares about. <laughs> there are maps with water. This is the best one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you aren't missing much. And it also fixed the issues, except for the start position things. I don't know why. So is they the really start... knew where they wanted to go. Yeah. Is that start position set up with like, the holographic buildings in the pregame? Is that widget or is that engine? That's a widget. Oh, good. You okay, even, I can fix it. You can't even queue pregame without the widget. I meant showing the models, like displaying the unit models. Yeah. That's a widget? One thing I... Mm. Okay. Sorry, that's a widget. Okay, good. Because there's something that I realized the other day talking to JK is that Everything, every widget that involves rendering of any sort that does draw world or draw world pre-unit needs to have a draw world refractions call that either calls the same thing or calls something that does something equivalent. If it calls frame buffer related stuff, it needs to do, I don't know if it can do U frame buffer stuff in draw world reflections, but stuff like this or pretty much anything that like the names or icons, that sort of thing, that needs to be, that needs to have a call for draw world and draw world refractions. I think Skazi's threatening to um, scallop drop. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work so well on a C map. I don't know, but it's something. They can definitely drop units underwater just by yeah, dropping them. Yeah, it's just that you're dropping don't a skirmisher. They can pick them up. If they float, I think so. But skirmishers don't. Boys do. So there's that. 
but also you'd, use, you'd lose your shotguns, which make the scallop drop so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, drop, dropping underwater scallop doesn't really sound very exciting. Okay, so Does it like factories coming up? Scallop's going for hover. Does hovercraft lose? I don't know. I, don't know. Well, if, I, I think I'm, it does well, 1v1 here. 1v1, but 2v2, I don't... It, yeah, but two v two. Who knows? Um, and I'm a, a lot of. I think a lot of hover matchups in C depend on you know how well does your opponent micro against claim, and how much do you claim or blow up on you today? Yeah. Well, anyway, we are onto the game itself. So Snuggle Base starting out with Shipyard, Pokemoko starting out with Amphib Factory, Skazi going with Amphib as well, and Yogstoth going for Hovercraft. So hopefully things should be a bit more visible this time around. Where's my sound? Oh, there is the sound. Okay, good. We have sound. So yeah, Skazi is... Actually, you know one thing I don't like about this map? The water is too opaque. It, like, the bump water settings are not set up properly, so it's hard to see through the water. I'm gonna switch to... I'd probably have to switch to dynamic to make that work nicely. There we go, that's better. I don't... I don't know if this has happened recently or it's just something I never noticed before. I was, I mean, I was playing a C game the other day and I, I had trouble um, linking up um, me or like mixes with chains of titles. I kept misjudging where the ti where the titles were actually going to be placed. Oh, I don't know if something's hmm. changed, which has caused like. Was it showing oh, yeah, the titles on the surface of the water or at the base of the water? No, it's well, it, when I. When I drag, say a line of, when I drag, say a, a line of titles, I'm getting a, getting it look like wind generators instead. Oh right, yeah, that would be harder to figure out. Although, does that the same overdrive radius? I don't know. Yeah, they do. Okay. Oh yeah, but you can't really see the overdrive radius except because it's on the surface of the water. The overdrive radius is underwater, which makes oh, yeah, it a bit the problem. confusing. Oh yeah, that's the problem. That should probably be fixed to draw on the surface. That's an easy thing. One thing I noticed. Hmm, one thing I noticed in a um, in a game on I think it was Coagulation March a while ago is I think I don't know, it may have been fixed since there's some bug with ra radar that radar displayed what you would be able to see if um, if if radar was if the radar was looking at the bottom of the ocean like the bottom of the water rather than the surface which is where most oh. things you would see with radar actually are. That sounds like an I think that's how radar actually works. If you can see the land, you can see everything around it. If not, then nothing. Oh, so it's a bit strange. Yeah. So we've I, got a raid in the bottom right. They're, they're both focusing on Snuggle Base. Yep, that's... So the hovers are hovers be working out so far quite but well. Urchin, Urchin's pretty good, but doesn't survive that. No, sadly, there's a snuggle base. Their commander at least is able to fight back a little bit, but there's only that one island, and that's a bit far away from this, the shipyard. And that's it. Sub Pokemon coming goes. in to help. Well, no, never mind. Trying to help. Hokumoko's got th three urchins, but that's not doing snuggle base any good. Well, Hokumoko will be fine. You know, after mm. snuggle base loses their entire base and it becomes a one-on-two. Yeah, he's, as long as they save the ship lab... I don't see that Might happening. Might be okay. I really yeah, don't see that not. happening. I'd be very yeah, surprised. Snug Snuggle, Base. Snuggle Base is having to terraform here to build an urchin on the on the land. Hey, they might save it. They've got the ducks in now. Mm, no, it's not oh, going to no, take too long. Low. It's too low, I think. Might have been killed by the scallop there. Well, at any rate, the ducks are trying to finish each other off at least. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's gonna be pretty unfortunate. I agree. I think needed just one more urchin. Hmm. I think Snuggle Snuggle Burst, I'd be building a caretaker here before the shipyard. I think it'd go faster, and he has he's accessing metal anyway. Well, you always want to do that. If you have enough metal, you have like 20 or more, or 15 or more metal even, build ch caretaker then shipyard, or build caretaker then factory, and it takes 50 but he's seconds instead of 60. Yeah, he's, see, he's, he's doing it now. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, you, it spends, oh, well, I guess, okay, Hokumogo is taking that. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing, it spends 50 seconds instead of 60 seconds, you save 10 seconds. 
which could be a couple units. Uh, and the caretaker is going to be able to um, reclaim all that stuff there. Yeah, that's even better. How much is, is this there? It's about 600 metal it's going to be able to reclaim. That's not too bad. Yeah, we see over in the north Wait, there yeah. is a pretty big fight. Skazi is taking the upper hand in this one. Scallops, unfortunately, not quite as useful against ducks as they are... Well, they are as useful below water as they are above water against ducks. And it's mm, certainly need becoming a scallops problem. before they start being useful against ducks. Yes, I feel like Kokomoko yeah. may have started build, yeah, I feel like he started building building scallops too early. I mean, like my understanding of the sea matchup's not really that great, but um, like well, it's er a large early map. on, yeah, early on, on, large uh, map you should build raiders for a while. It's comic capture sized. Yeah, but yeah, it's exactly comic capture sized. But not only that, like even even on a small map, um, you kind of need to get established with ducks, I think, before before you go into building a significant ball of scallops, because one or two scallops is really not that great. Not underwater. Above water, though, they, they get on the the islands. Mm. And it's awesome. But no, that's not happening. So it looks like... Stokobis! Scott is taking that. Hey, Stokobis and Hokoboko are actually kind of keeping up an economy, surprisingly. That might be partly reclaim. I think it's largely reclaim. Yeah, they've got the reclaiming. But they are making a reasonably well defended territory on top at least. Mm. Yeah. Okamoko's doing well there. Despite my um, qualms with his unit composition. Well, Hokomoko hasn't been attacked as much. I mean, Skazi is kind of holding back. They aren't confident they can take out Hokomoko. They just... They're just taking a few units here and there. They're taking pot shots where they can. And in this case, it's working out fairly well in the northeast. Decent amount of damage being done, getting rid of one of the conches. And is that harassment? Oh, it's not. That's a fusion plant over the southwest. I'd actually like... switch to pure crusader at the moment to take out the urchins. Oh, for... Like in the south. Yeah. Sorry, for Hokemoto? Sure or... Sorry, it... for... Done the, done the... Ooh. Sorry. Oh, you see, Snuggle Bay is switching over to crusader. You mean... Yes, well, actually anyone. The thing is that down the bottom here, you know, Xelda's built six urchins and a sonar as f to defend four mexes. Yeah, it's a little uh, I feel like he's, uh, Considering how badly Snucklebase was crippled, I think he's really overcommitted to defense there. Especially where, where as he, a ship player. Yeah where, mm -hmm. where he, yeah, where he could have been building more of an army to keep Snucklebase under control, whereas you know, with these, the Hunters coming out, which and the hunters are doing okay against the mass dagger spam. Of Three yourself. hunters now against daggers. That'll should destroy them, as long as they're yeah. actually grouped up. Because one on their own, they're pretty bad. But they've got the yeah. AOE. I think the reclaims run out now, and Yogzathoth and Skarzy are about f forty metal income each to Snugglebase and Hokomoko is somewhere around thirty. This is not going to go over well them. Although Snugglebase and Hokomoko have territory they can use. They have actually a bit... Their mech count is still increasing. Although that's mm. also true of Yogstaff and Skazi. That, that being said, over the north, we see that there is a bit of contesting over some of these metal extractors. Hokomoko is going to lose the fight, but at least they're going to buy a bit of time. If they get reinforcements, then they might be able to turn this around. Raiding well north. Oh. Depending on whether he kills those scallops. Yeah, I think the scallops are going to go down. Mm. Scallops are... Yeah, they're dead. There's an interesting fact about C that um, Amphibious has about three units. You have, you have your ducks, duck, well, maybe only two, ducks and scallops. Buoys, you know, maybe you build some buoys to take out um, urchins, urchins if you don't wanna, if you don't want to switch to Crusader, and maybe eventually you get Grizzly. But um, so, so you know, Amph has two or three units. They're mostly very general. Ship, on the other hand, you have all these specialists. You have so you have Skeeter, Snake, Typh Typhoon, Hunter, Enforcer's a bit meh, but Crusader, Serpent. Crusader's all of those... got a depth charge for some reason. Yeah. But like all of those units see play. Mm hmm. And they do. You just need to start killing off the oceans with this Crusader, and Bottom will actually be doing fairly well. Well. I think Yogstoth has oh, some way around at this point. There's a switch coming. Yog. Ooh, yeah, rapiers. A lot of rapiers. Very nice. This is something. I, like, this is something I would only do on in, on in Kulka wet, but Banshees might have been better. Yeah, I've seen Banshees work out beautifully on this map. Although, 
Yeah, although on the other hand, shredders would make short work of them. Not that they're being built up, though. The eight skis are still coming on the, in on the right. Yes, you know, like, if, I, if you just build a dozen banshees and send them up to just start killing Hokomoko's mexes, it'd be a while before he'd have a response to that. And, ban and banshees will just wipe out the mexes faster than the rapiers will. Mm -hmm. But but on the other hand, the rapiers will be more. The rapiers will probably be more useful once there's some degree of anti-air build. So yeah, that's the thing. It's a longer haul right. thing. And Scars is moving in up to the top. I think Scars. Yeah, Scars is going to take this. No problem at all. Nah, there's enough urgency. Does he have vision? There's enough urgency? Well, wait, oh yeah, I guess there are. Yeah, if you go back, there is. Oh, there's Banshees and Rapiers. Does Scarzi have Sonar up there? It's a bit hard to tell. I don't think he does. That'll be a problem mm. for him, because he, he can't even... He can't actually... He couldn't actually see Hokomoko's scallops there, probably. This is the point where... Okay, there are the Urgens. Okay, Hokomoko gets double teamed. He, he has built some Banshees, too. Oh wait, no, that's Scarzi building banshees. Like, okay, I guess that works. Oh yeah. So, so rape your banshee coming in here and ripping everything apart. Probably yeah, and, seal it. Yeah, this being this being a C map, you know, there's no defenders or LLTs to even even begin to combat these. It's all just urchins which can't fire up at all. Yep. Well, that seems the, the like it's about it. Yeah, the, f the flip side to gunships, which is gunships can't hit anything underwater with any unit they have. It's a bit strange. Mm hmm. You wouldn't want to start gunship, even in a big team game, I don't think, but. Ah, uh, it kills well, mixes. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I suppose it does. And but, it like, kills the hovercraft. I see Rapier too, I would not. Well, Rapier start? Well, there were a few of those that Valkyrie start before for scouting. Valkyrie for scouting is fairly cheap. And quite fast, like yeah. 80 metal for a cheap scout. That also makes your opponent a bit wary. They're thinking, oh, a drop's coming, crap. Well, they might think no, that. I think more on a scout, in, awful in on particular, side, a C map. Yeah, they won't expect on a C map, I suppose. They just expect you'd be yeah, going for a but, scout. Yeah, the, like, gunship, yeah, gunship switch on a C map is brutal. But if you start gunship and your opponent starts amp, so. There's anglers everywhere and they can't do anything. Because you can't bomb underwater. Yeah. Oops. Doesn't quite work out. Huh. So what? What are those gunships actually done? I mean, they, they haven't. They haven't killed the. Well, the rape just killed Hokomoko. They didn't kill the. They killed all of his energy. Well, they killed his energy. They killed. They didn't kill the factory, but they did kill the caretakers. And it looks like Scars is going to capitalize, and his army should be able to roll over Hokomoko's now. Pretty it's like base much. Had a bit of a early front line. Yeah, the switch to anglers isn't going to help too much from the looks of it. Yeah, I feel like Snugglebase and Hokomoko could well have taken this game had Snugglebase not been crippled at the start. And they need to be a bit more careful about you know, the, the double team. Yeah, so that's going to probably be Yaksa and Skazi going on for fight for first place. Yeah. And Snugglebase and Hokomoko well, they, taking they, us all they, to third. They, they did take one game off... Um, got a drone before, which is, I have to say, more, more than I would have wagered. But yeah, they, but I don't know if they're going to be able to do that now, again. Yeah, to, to, to take first, they need to win two best of three series. That's going to be rough. Yeah. They need lots of surprises. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like the 1v1 tournament last month where it was Gorda and Drone, where it was... I mean, okay, at that point, Drone had been undefeated, but then Gorda went and just ran it back very nicely. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't see that happening. Yeah, well, hopefully they, hopefully they at least make good ga good games of it. And they, they play. Yeah, the, the, the game's on um on Comet Cat. Well, I, I only caught the end of the icy run game, but um the Comet Catcher game was um you know it was competitive. <sighs> I feel like Skaski and Yogos. Sorry, Yo. You'll understand C a bit more, even though they weren't the one that chose this map. I agree. Maybe. They definitely have shown some. They have shown better understanding. They know what they're doing. They have shown yeah, they're I, I, fairly I, confident. Yeah, the thing which I said the biggest thing which point. I mean, like it's a bit hard to judge considering that was, you know Snuggle Base and Okamoko are behind from the start. I think the the one fact I'd point to which says that is I 
I do think Hokomoko went to scallops a bit too early. And underestimating Urchin. I think it was All also, right. I think part of it might have been they're quite used to how they work on land. And how they work in the sea is considerably right. different, especially when your opponent isn't going for a sea start. Anyway, it's Hovercraft Amphib. If they're going for ships, then scallops make a bit more sense, but Hovercraft Amphib, the ducks will work fine. Hmm. Oh, actually, boys would even work fine, too, because, like, ducks for underwater and boys for above water. There was a point, I can't remember who it was, one of the observers made, that perhaps Snuggle Base against the Daggers would have had better luck with, um... I mean, like, the Typhoons did okay, but... Crusaders? Perhaps Typhoons... Sorry, oh, no, no, the, hunters, was... the Hunters did okay, perhaps typhoon, typhoon would have done better. Yeah. Horribly, typhoons are... they've got quite good AoE. Typhoons are meant to do that, that's the point, so I, I agree totally, that's... That's exactly what should have happened. It's a funny thing that, like, didn't. The... <laughs> Sorry, you're saying? Oh, had a bunch of um, depth oh. charges bouncing around. Yeah, so I've been noticing that in games recently. The new engines. Got some Fuck, did you <laughs> yeah, rubber depth. Oh, I see it. Charges. The rubber depth charge. What the? Oh yeah, it does that. They. They're weird. Yeah, no, that that looks like a bug to me of some kind. <laughs> I have to say. It would not surprise yeah, the new me. New engines sort of forgot what they should do. And decide they should bounce around. Well, there were bouncing torpedoes too. I pointed that out in several casts so far of torpedoes hitting land and then bouncing away. Or well, they do that. That's oh. actually by design. Oh, okay, it is. <laughs> like, a, yeah. like, like a Lero bouncy mine, <laughs> says Sprung. Have you played Lero? Lero? Lero. Well, they didn't no. cause any desync though, like in Lero. Right. Yeah. What's Lero? Uh, well, like, Okay, do you know Worms? Yes. Lero's like Worms, but not turn-based. <laughs> oh my. Real fun. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, that sounds awesome, but terrifying. Is. Well, so Scarcy and Nilksal will take the series? Yeah, pretty much. And now have to win six games? No, four. Four it's games. Two best, best of threes the finals. Uh, why must water always be bugged? I wonder what the... Oh, okay, that, that could hurt. The finals first map, Valus Marineris. Is that massive? It's pretty massive. Yeah, I think it's Is 18 it red? by 16. It's red. Yeah, it's a Martian map. Okay, so that's... Oh, crap, I forgot to... I keep forgetting to actually write down what's going on in each match. I've got this thing... This thing at the bottom that has been game one every time. Okay... Can't fit teams on here. So game one is going to be Valus Menoneris, and I mean Martian map. This is actually based off of a terrain feature on Mars.